So please, if we can have the, the speakers come for the uh, Q&A, come to the panel. And uh, we're going to ask for uh, some questions from, uh, from the audience. I'm sure everybody has lots of questions. Everyone's dead. <laughs> I can start if you like. David, I was curious, what, what inspired you to replace churches by trees? Is there a? Churches by trees. Is there a story there? Did you try other substitutions, like trees by churches? Sure, or? sure. There was, so actually, the, 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 the main thing that happened was, uh, you know, we previously discovered that there was, you could put doors in buildings, and you couldn't put doors in the sky. And there was this context sensitivity. And so then the question was, oh, is there a grammar going on? Mm -hmm. And so we were playing with all sorts of different building parts, sort of a grammar of architecture. And so the, 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 the re replacing churches with trees is just one of the examples, but there's sure. a, sort of a striking one. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> we can't well, I'm going to ask a, a question, and it's a, sort of a general question, but I think it's a, it's a really uh, important to one. You know, we have a lot of people who are here, students, uh, as you were uh, a few years ago. And, you know, sort of looking back at, uh, at the time when you were uh, students here, if you could tell the students uh, here right now, what would be like one thing that you would say, oh, make sure to really take advantage of these before you leave uh, CSEL? Um, because, you know, Years down the road, when you look back, you're going to say, like, that was the thing that, uh, that uh, you know, really uh, changed my, uh, you know, my trajectory. Easy yes. question. I, I'm happy to start. Um, I think take the time to explore. Um, I think even more, when I started, I was like, I'm going to get a PhD in five years. I'm going to go out and become a faculty member. Um, it took way longer than that. I did a Rhodes Scholarship. I did all sorts of meandering paths. Uh, and I think even more now with generative AI, there's this pressure to come in with seven machine learning publications and then like get out in four years and go to open AI. And I think it's this amazing time where you can have five to six years to do kind of whatever you want and like invent new fields and, um, and really take that time to explore and sort of really pursue different interests and figure out what you want to do because it's a really incredible opportunity that you won't necessarily get in the same way afterwards. That's Maybe. great advice. I'd love to add to that. Completely agree. I would also say that um, many, in my experience when I was a grad student, um, many people experienced the imposter syndrome and this was this sense that you don't belong, maybe you're not good enough, how did you end up here? Um, and I got some really good advice when we talked about it um, that I've taken throughout life because you know, you'll know you feel it again. So people who introspect at all will occasionally feel like imposters. If you never feel like an imposter, then chances are you're either not introspecting or you're maybe a little sociopathic, just a little bit. Um, <laughs> it's, it's okay, you should feel that occasionally. It's okay, they'll let you stop it. Just, keep pushing forward and you know, find something that's really worth working on because that'll make you feel a lot better about what you're doing. Um, but yes, do take the time to explore because it's a really luxurious time. You're, you're totally underpaid, that's a fact. But you know, so what? Later, you'll be eventually paid well, chances are. You will not be having all of the intellectual fun that you are actually having right now. So just try to remember that that's what's happening and enjoy it with your peer group because sometimes you end up being friends with those people for life um, and that's another massive perk of, of being here. Yeah, maybe I would briefly add as, uh, I mean, advice to myself perhaps is to not be too reverent about disciplinary boundaries. I mean, I think as a grad student, I was constantly asking myself, like, is this computer science? Is this computer science? When you get, you know, out of school, the, the impact in the world doesn't ask you, is it computer science? It's like, is it impact? Even is it science? Is it scholarship? And often, you know, if we create the fields that are spanning boundaries, then people celebrate that that field exists. And in fact, you know, there are new conferences that were invented in the last 15 years that now, you know, celebrate work that I was trying to do and we were trying to do, you know, uh, before those fields existed. So I think putting the science first, putting the impact first, and worrying about the disciplinary classification later is, a, is advice I'd give myself. Okay. David? Oh, my, my advice? Oh, I don't know. I think my, my old talk was advice. <laughs> 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 but but I, no, I, I, I agree that the, the PhD is a unique few years in your life. Uh, the, the advice I got, I think, turned, turned out to be 
true that you should uh, you shouldn't look at it just like uh, you know sort of the next step in your education. You look at it as its treasure, this this moment of academic freedom that you'll never replicate again uh, in your life and and take advantage of it. Uh, so I've been told uh, that we're out of time, but maybe I'm going to indulge here a little bit and ask one really quick question with so a really quick answer. One thing great about having this introspection talk than talk about one thing is you can see everybody's career is not linear. Things have changed. A lot of different things, you jump into things. And for a lot of people, it's, when they're working on something, it's very happy to have a linear thing. You keep doing that. How do you make, did you make this decision to jump out of a very nice, uh, a comfortable path and, and, and change? I mean, what, what, what made you, and that's a good thing for everybody, how do you make that jump? So it's funny, because I was having a conversation with uh, one of my, uh, well, one of the faculty who was on my committee, and he's still out there, uh, Boris, where is he? Um, and you know, he, we were saying that one of the things that we really appreciated was the ability to keep shifting and changing and working on problems that we find most compelling. Um, and it's not true everywhere, but it's especially true at MIT. Um, having that intellectual curiosity. So yes, I mean, I did, I did switch fields in a way, and I had to stop taking money where I was used to getting research money. Um, but it's completely worth it, because having that freedom, as has been repeatedly said by the members of the panel, the joy of being able to pursue the problems that you believe are meaningful, uh, that just keep appearing, I mean, there's just nothing more exciting than that intellectually. Um, and so the price is small that you form new, com in fact, it's not even a price. You, you find new communities, you discover new conferences, you discover new peers. That's the best job. So we are unfortunately out of time. I would like to give a big thanks to the speakers. And